This is East Coast DNA. I'm your host, Darcy Walsh. And today we have a special guest, Ken Kelly from the Monoxides. So uh, hopefully a lot of the people watching this uh, podcast are already familiar with who the Monoxides are. We cover a lot of new artists, mm -hmm. uh, new up and coming from the last couple of years. So uh, it's not always that we have an established name. But you've been around for quite some time. Forever. It's like we're the grandpas of the uh, the whole scene here. In yeah. Moncton at this point. So. so was it 1988 that you originally started? Yeah. So our singer Steve and I uh, started playing together in 1988. Um, we, I mean, we called ourselves monoxides, but we really weren't, you know, we weren't talented enough to really be able to play our songs like more than once yeah uh, we we would you know literally come up with a steve would come up with a guitar riff and i'd put a drum beat to it and we would just shout whatever kind of came to mind um and so we continued like that and then we had a few uh, uh a couple people come and go uh our friend dana robertson played bass with us for a little while uh and then pj joined in 1990 and then Derek, our guitarist, joined in 1991. So depending depending how kind of how much we want to talk about our past, we'll sometimes you know say, well, the band started in '80 or '91, and I guess both are correct. I, I definitely think fans of the '90s music scene in general, but definitely like Canadian content, it was it was different back then than it is now. It's hard to describe to anyone that didn't lived through it yeah but yeah. you definitely became prominent especially in our region in those scenes yeah but your band fell in with a lot of other acts that were constantly going back and forth across the country it was it was a different era where people were doing a lot more national tours too there's a lot more festivals that encouraged that we're starting to see it come back but yeah. it was different so at what point would you have started working with Handsome Boy? So in the summer of 1994, um, well, okay, I'll, I'll back up to the start of 1994. We had uh, showcased at the East Coast Music Awards in Newfoundland. It was the first time they were held outside of the Atlanta or outside of uh, Halifax. Mm -hmm. so, so we flew to Newfoundland, had a showcase. It was really well received. Um, and then the following month, we went to Canadian Music Week in Toronto. And then the summer of 94, um, we had gotten to know this guy named Jody Fernihow, and he ended up becoming our manager. Uh, but we were often kind of bouncing ideas off him, and he had a booking agency at the time. And so the summer of 94, I think we might have given them like a month's notice or something. And we're like, hey, you know, can you set us up a tour of Ontario? And, you know, they ended up pulling off just these ridiculously great shows for us. It was really amazing. And uh, at the last of those shows, Jeff Rogers, who owns Hansa Boy, mm -hmm. came out. And it was the first time we met him. And uh, he's like, look, I really like what you're doing. I think we should, you know, talk about, you know, doing a record together. So negotiations don't tend to, um, they're, they're not a fast process. I mean, that was... Yeah. That was August of 94. And I think we only signed our deal in February of 95. So there's like, there's a lot of back and forth and, and that's no one's fault. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. Kind sure. of thing, if that makes sense. And so, so yeah, go BMG ahead. distribution would have came through them because I, I worked record stores at that era. Yeah. So I get a little nerdy about that stuff. Yeah. No, just... no, no, no. Me too. Me too. So at some point, when we were negotiating with uh, Jeff, BMG, so I guess I'll backtrack. There was a promo person at BMG and her name was Nadine Jelino. Okay. And the first show we played in Toronto, I met Nadine. I was introduced by uh, uh, this guy, Cam Carpenter. He's a legend kind of in the, in the Canadian music scene circles. And um, Cam introduced me to Nadine and, you know, kind of, you know, we, we made small talk or whatever. Nadine kind of, you know, left to go chat with someone else. And uh, 
when she left, Cam said, don't worry if she doesn't like you. She hates everything. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, it didn't, it didn't bother me. I just thought the comment was, you know, funny more than anything. Mm -hmm. and, I, and after our set, ironically, uh, Nadine was the first person back there just raving about how much she loved us. So she worked, she worked for BMG and she was actually with Jeff Rogers from Hands of Boy that last night we played in Toronto that summer of 94. So Jeff wanted to do something with us and it was more or less set up with the understanding that, you know, we would kind of quote, graduate to the big leagues kind of thing. Like do it, do an EP with Jeff and kind of do a deal together with Jeff and BMG. But it was kind of understood that we would, you know, when it came time, when it came time for a record, it would kind of be uh, for a full length record. That is, it would be under mm. the BMG umbrella. Okay. So yeah. I remember a lot of promotion and it, it really is a coincidence that that's the era that I was working at a record store. Cause yeah. it, in the time span of my life, it was only a couple of years, but yeah. galaxy of Stooges was being put out. So I remember like the press releases back then weren't EPKs. They were actual yeah. nice pieces of paper that were all yeah, done. Yeah, up glossy. Glossy photos. Yeah. yeah. So I remember that and it had like quite a bit of a story and people yeah. read magazines, not the internet. So I, I can yeah. vividly remember sitting there reading about you guys back yeah. then. Yeah, I, I still I still have the CD right here. Actually, awesome. from way back then. So it wasn't like you did have another album that came out after Galaxy of Stooges. Yeah. But then after that, the band continued to play, but didn't release new material. Yeah, more or less like we would maintain we maintained a really kind of irregular live schedule. It was kind of like whenever we felt like it kind mm -hmm. of thing. Or, you know, a, a show offer um, or, you know, to go play a show with some old friends or something like that. Um, so, yeah, it was really kind of irregular. We kind of talked about the idea of, you know, recording something new. I mean, we've, there's a boatload of songs. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I don't know, it's just like... <laughs> It sounds cliche to say, Darcy, but like a lot changed in the course of 23 years. It's like, yeah, there's, you know, there's seven kids between the five of us. And, you know, obviously priorities changed and understandably so. Like that's, you know, that's no one's fault. Um, we always considered ourselves lucky in the sense that it seemed like people were still interested in kind of seeing us play when we did play. And I mean, that's humbling too. It's like, you know, especially given the the um what's a word i'm looking for given the lifespan of so many artists these days yeah you know and and the fact that people were still interested in hearing what we had to say or you know would come see us play like that's that's encouraging and so we always kind of thought like well okay we're gonna we're gonna put something new out at some point and it was just this indeterminate you know like well we'll get to it sometime and then yeah. it was actually in the fall of 2020 uh steve uh wrote the basically our new single and he went over to marco's house marco's our our uh third guitarist and and vocalist yes. and a phenomenal talent like you know he's 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 added just so much to what we do and um marco has a little studio and steve went over there and they demoed the songs themselves and kind of surprised derek pj and i and we're all like, oh my God, this is freaking great. Like, you know, and so that kind of lit, that kind of lit the fire. It took us a while, admittedly, to, to get everything recorded because again, like we're not, we're not the fastest workers, um, you know, kind of best intentions, I think, sure. you know, to get to, have, you know, to get it done. But then I don't know, just right at the right towards the end of last year um or maybe early this year we were just kind of like okay let's just do this if you know just for ourselves if if nothing else like obviously there's no expectations for anything it's just kind of like we're still making music because we enjoy it and i think that's the whole premise that any band starts out with you know yeah. and you know i don't want to say we were fortunate that we never had great success but i mean we play together because we love playing together 
And that's yeah. really what, what this is about. And it's a continuation, you know, of this friendship and bond, you know, for, for what, like 32 years now. So yeah. it's kind of like, well, why wouldn't we at this point, you know, it's like, you know, we, we don't, we're not dropping our jobs to go on tour or anything like, like, you know, no, it's like, it, it's just more of, um, I want to say it's just as much per personal fulfillment as it is like kind of, you know, wanting to, um, you know, get back out. We're, we're always, we always love playing live, but we always kind of felt that um, we were doing maybe ourselves and those in the audience, maybe a disservice by not kind of bringing something new to the table. Sure. I know I know there's endless jokes about, you know, bands playing new stuff and that's when people go to the bathroom or get their beer or whatever. But it it is, it's very much like, a, a, I think, a personal fulfillment thing. Like it's not, um, you know, like I said, you make music for yourself first and foremost. And if other people listen, well, it's just kind of gravy kind of thing. And that's probably the key to the fact that you've been able to keep the same lineup for such a long period of time. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's a good thing too, is like, there was never any drama between us. It was just kind of like, you know, and I was always relatively confident that we'd come back to it at some point. You know, I didn't know whether it would be one song or two songs. So, you know, it, it's nice to kind of have a, a little more definitive of a plan and kind of know that we're all on the same page. Sure. And it, Marco's been with the band for a, a great deal of like 20 uh, years or well, something. 20 years. Yeah. So first recording though, is it for yes, Marco? It yeah. Uh, so, well, he, he played a little bit on the free release of energy, which is our last okay. length. He played a little bit on that, but this is kind of like, I see it as like his first kind of official contribution, if you will. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, let's great. talk about that for a minute. You have a new single that uh, it's actually release day of this episode, unless yep. somebody's listening to it at a re-air date. <laughs> but uh, so June 28th, yep. uh, new single, Let Her Know. Yep. So what's the song about? I listened to it. It's great. But what do you want to tell people about this? Um, I think it just kind of stems from uh, a universal experience that a lot of people, and, and it's not necessarily, uh, it, it just, it's a universal experience about kind of seeing a friend uh, paired up with someone that's kind of a completely wrong for them. And, and I'll just kind of leave it at that kind of thing. Sure. Um, but it's, it's such a universal, you know, such a universal theme. And I think probably everyone can identify if not in themselves and probably somebody that, you know, has been in one of those situations. And so a new single means a new album's coming. Well, with, with one step at a time, it's kind of yeah. like taking this, it's taken us 23 years to uh, to get this far. Sure. But um, so we've got this new single. We're going to put out probably a second single in the fall, but we're also writing for a record that we'd like to release next year. And in the meantime, Galaxy of Stooges, I believe I read somewhere there's a vinyl reissue coming yes. of that. Yes, and that's really, that's kind of really exciting too because um, we, years ago, <coughs> excuse me, years ago, we had looked into like what it would cost to to license it because we're like, you know, boy, it'd be great to have, you know, that on vinyl. Mm -hmm. And we found out the licensing cost and it wasn't actually all that like cost prohibitive or anything like that. But it's just like, like everything else in the last 23 years, it's kind of like, well, push that to the back burner for now, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's a, it was a great idea. Uh, and then, PJ called me one day and uh, he said, he asked me if I knew Eric Warner and I knew Eric's name from the We Are Busy Bodies label. And he's okay. like, Eric wants to talk to us about uh, releasing Galaxy of Stooges on vinyl. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So we spoke with Eric, total professional. You know, he kind of, he, he had a better vision laid out for the record in like our 15 minute phone call than we had come up with over, you know, the course of a few years. Okay. So, yeah, so really kind of just he he knows what he's doing and kind of, you know, 
um, we're just kind of sitting on the sidelines, like watching it all kind of unfold. Um, but it's it's so thrilling because I don't know. It's like vinyl is like that. You know, we all grew up listening to records, and you know, and that's that's how we see our work. Even even though like we're it's it's a singles world at this point, mm -hmm. we still enjoy that cohesive thread that runs throughout a record. And you know, to have this coming out on vinyl is especially. You know, it's really, you know, it, it's special. Yeah, I, I feel biased because of the era that it came out originally for myself. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, I'm i going to end up buying that. Like, I'm going to oh, yeah. want that right away, right? Like, I yeah. already know that. So yeah, yeah. it's awesome to see that it's coming out. And yeah. you've been, I guess, the majority of the lifespan of the band is has been known as a live band too if you consider the last 23 years as a whole yeah. there too right yeah, so sure. your summer coming ahead i have known of you playing around at a few shows around the east coast over the last couple of years i see the name yeah. pop up every once in a while mm -hmm. and I, were you at blacktop ball here in pector county at one point yeah in 2019 right before okay. right before covid shut everything down we played that's not why that didn't cause a problem or something. You're coming to my home county. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, it was awesome. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. We had such a great time that night. It's like, admittedly, we didn't kind of know what to expect going into it. Sure. Yeah. But we got there and just the whole vibe of the place. And I mean, the Stanfields guys are, are awesome. And just the whole vibe of the festival was like, we all agreed it's like before we even played we're like this is a festival like you know that we would go to kind of thing yeah that's the ultimate kind of um line in the sand like when you get to play at a festival that you know kind of has that atmosphere and is just you know you know you'd attend as a fan like that's that's appealing yeah you know? yeah absolutely yeah so what's the summer looking like i know you've got a big announcement that you just made for touring plans or live plans, but what else yeah. do you have coming up here in the summer? And you can talk about your special announcement yourself because well, you okay. know it better than I do. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's all good. Um, so we're backing up Sloan here in Moncton on Canada today, which is awesome because it's been the better part of 20 years since we last play with them. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's going to be nice. Um, and then, at the start of August, we're playing Area 506 in St. John, which is this fantastic festival. It, it started kind of as a means to really kind of push uh, New Brunswick artists and businesses kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's called Area 506. Um, it's very, you know, driven by New Brunswickers. And it's, it's a fantastic festival. Um, you know, so we're on a lineup this year with like Billy Talent and Crown Lands and, and the Beaches. It's a really impressive lineup. Like our hats off to Ray uh, Gracewood and the entire the entire Area Five Hundred Six team because they just they it's it's one of those festivals that you know again like Blacktop Ball. It's like I could see attending this kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then the only other thing we've got on our schedule for the summer is uh, we're playing uh, an in store in uh, St. John, New Brunswick. Uh, cool. for for uh, Second Spin Records, or it's their 20th anniversary. And uh, the owner is a big fan. And, oh, cool. you know, and so he's like, would you guys ever come play the store? And we're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like very, you know, kind of very, it, it kind of came up and it was like, yeah, that would be fun, you know? And, and so again, like COVID kind of, uh, we've been talking about it for a couple of years because of, you know, COVID and, and uh it ended up getting pushed back but i'm i'm glad that we're kind of finally doing it uh and that's just two weeks after area 506 oh, there so that's that's a pretty busy summer for you guys right there <laughs> that's, anyway, uh, yeah. yeah that's that's about 300 percent more shows and sometimes than some years we play so yeah that's good. but i mean we want to like we'd love to get back to halifax in the fall and just kind of like you know kind of like i alluded to earlier no one's putting their jobs and like we're really kind of limited just because of, you know, the various jobs everyone works. We're really kind of limited when we can play. Sure. But at the same time, we're all like, you know, we're all committed and interested in kind of playing when we can. So 
So where should any fans that are watching this that are just recently finding out that you're back at it or just hearing the new single, where should they follow you online to keep up to date with what's yeah, happening? I, I, I try to keep everything updated. We just relaunched uh, our monoxides.ca mm -hmm. uh, website. It had been dormant for a number of years. And so we're in the process of getting that updated. But everything like, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like we keep those, you know, we, we probably overshare, like I'm kind of worried that people are going to get, uh, get sick of us or kind of like, you know, hit the stop, stop these updates or whatever. But, uh, but no, I mean, we're, you know, we, we do our best to kind of have an active social presence. So. Awesome. So I'll put some links in the notes down below for the That's description. Cool. Yeah. Um, I did have another quick question for you. Sure. That's not necessarily for the monoxides. When I was doing some research, I came across a site that I'd definitely seen before, but it wasn't being used for a little while. Maybe the, it, it was your own music news site. Yeah. So do you have plans to revisit that in the future or is that something that kind of fell I've... by the wayside? We, we did have a lot of things happen over the last few years. Yeah, honestly, Darcy, like I, I love writing and I've always been interested in writing. And for, geez, like maybe eight years or so, like I was the primary writer for music for like the newspaper here in Moncton. And then I started like doing a little bit for the provincial newspaper too. And it was a, it was kind of one of those things that I tell people, it's like, well, just because we haven't been playing, it's like, I, I tried, did my best to stay connected to music in different ways and writing was kind of one of those ways mm -hmm. uh, i got to interview like a handful of like my musical heroes and got to meet you know meet on the phone like just the nicest like most talented you know people and it's a different it's a different thing kind of being on the other end of an interview um you know when you're when you're the one asking questions and i find I've always kind of had a, you know, a natural curiosity and I like to think that, you know, maybe I, I uncovered something here or there that, you know, maybe others hadn't, mm -hmm. um, but uh, will I go back to it? It's tough to say like the, the Moncton daily, uh, like pretty much every other newspaper in the country, like they basically did away with entertainment coverage Yeah, uh, and where I was just freelance, like I, you know, I have a job. Mm -hmm. And I was just doing that on the side and uh, just, you know, organizational changes, like no bad blood with me and any of the staff or anything like the writing was on the wall in a way, because when I went, when I started telling publicists, I'm like, well, the Moncton Daily's, you know, done with widespread music coverage, at least to the extent they were doing it. Um, a lot of folks were like, you know, they were surprised it lasted as long as it did kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and it was after like, you know, the Globe and Mail had trimmed back there its coverage and the Toronto Sun, like, you know, so the writing was on the wall in a lot of ways. So I can't really say like I was shocked or anything, but, uh, you know, I still try my best to kind of keep my my writing muscles active, you know, when I can. Yeah, so. de definitely the content out there as far as uh, where to get it. It's it died off comes back a little bit and then it's so spread out that i i even feel guilty myself that there's a lot of people that i know that are currently doing stuff that we all have smaller audiences spread out all over the region like yeah. we almost need it all unified but our yeah. world's not like that anymore so no it's not it, it, it's, it really isn't it, it'll settle and we'll find a place for all of us to collectively I think share so because there's you know there's a, a boatload of artists like making stuff that's worthy of covering mm -hmm. i don't you know I, I understand that that you know maybe sports um is a more kind of general interest topic but i mean to me it, you know as a musician like the arts have always been important and i think it's too bad that you know kind of it's being just kind of tossed by the wayside like it's just it's unfortunate yeah yeah, yeah. it's well it's it's marginalization because it really is it's a shrinking it's a smaller area out there for people to actually yeah, have an audience too so yeah absolutely 
But on happier news, I have 100% freedom on this show right now because I <laughs> work right. for myself. So yeah. uh, for your new single, is it all right if we treat fans to a full listen of it here right in the podcast? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Perfect. So I think we'll uh, fade into that now before we lose our call. Okay. And uh, we'll put the links once again down in the bottom for everyone so they can follow and see if uh, anything new is coming up. And I'm going to keep an eye out for that Galaxy of Stooges final so I can put that over there in my collection. Awesome. Yeah. Very excited. Thanks again. Thank you, Darcy. Really appreciate your interest. (laughs) 